Hi everyone, I've got something really exciting to share with you today. I want to show you the trailer for Make Up A Glamorous History. So this is a new docu-series that I'm presenting and um, I was first approached by the BBC in 2019. Just before I show you the trailer, I'll just tell you a little bit how it came about. And um, I think everyone knows that I'm the kind of history of makeup obsessive person. Um, so they came to me and they said they wanted to make this docu-series and we were talking and everything seemed to be going great. And then of course the pandemic struck. So I thought, oh, well, that's it now. It's probably not gonna happen. And um, certainly throughout the whole of the first lockdown, I just thought, oh, well. Anyway, we started talking again and um, by but roughly about, what was it, September, October, we'd narrowed our focus and we were actually starting to shoot it. So that was a miracle, really. I mean, we couldn't obviously travel anywhere outside the UK. We had to have very a very, very tiny crew in a bubble. Um, the restrictions were quite intense because we, you know, the, the, it was a full lockdown. And um, so access to certain locations that maybe we would have gone to was, anyway. We got it done and um, so it's three episodes and because of the COVID restrictions and all the rest of it, this one really focuses on British history. So we mainly were filming in London and I took a few trips kind of out of London, but as I say, not that easy at the moment, um, but it's still fantastic. I mean, the amount of like episode one, which is an hour, is really only based on one decade, which is the 1780. So it's the real high Georgian. So if you think of Marie Antoinette and the huge, enormous wigs and the makeup they used, and I explored all the actual substance that the substances that they used and remade it. Um, and then episode two is the Victorians, which is again almost too much information to fit into one hour because you sort of think of it as being no makeup makeup, but actually there were lots of crazy ideas and crazy things going on around beauty trends and beauty and makeup. And then episode three is the 1920s. So that really is how the birth of Hollywood is affecting the makeup trends. And um, that's really, that's such a great episode because of course there's so much to delve into and there's so many archives to get into. And, um, and yeah, so it was super exciting. The show is a bit like a cross between a cookery show because I'm actually making all of the original formulas. So scouring those pharmaceutical handbooks and really discovering what it was made of. Um, and then also there was some very, very toxic recipes, as you know. So for that, I was working with a professional pharmacist at one of the universities here, but I actually got to make lead ceruz. I've been dreaming about making that. I mean, that sounds weird, but I've been dreaming about making it for years because I never understood why, even after people knew it was really, really poisonous, men and women continued to use lead ceruz instead of the non-toxic version. So. I've always wondered why, and to be able to make it and compare the two, fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So yeah, and then I'm also um, doing makeup as well. So uh, doing makeup on a model. Again, we could only have one model for every single episode, the, one, the same model. We had to shoot it in a very small period of time, again in a bubble. The model was actually in the bubble with a crew member, and um, she'd never worn makeup before. so. So that was interesting because the next thing I'm kind of doing all these crazy looks on her. And finally speaking to incredible experts. So the best historians and getting to go into archives and museums and art galleries and really get behind the scenes. Um, my, one of my favorite things was looking at the receipts from the Duchess of Devonshire and seeing how much she spent on her hair and makeup, which was just blew my mind. So, so yeah, so that's it. Um, as I say, if this is popular and people like it and it does well, then I would love to do series two. And hopefully, hopefully by then, the world is a different place because I would love to travel. I would love to go to South America and, and China and Africa and really do the whole of the history of makeup since the beginning of time. That would be my... That would be my dream. But um, for now, we've got this series and I think it's fantastic and I hope I've done you proud. I hope you'll enjoy it. It's on the BBC at the moment and then it's going to BBC iPlayer. 
and then I've been told that after a month or two it will then be distributed to a wider audience so I will keep you updated um, and let you know if when it becomes available to watch globally so hopefully that won't be too long and um, that's it here's the trailer I'm Lisa Eldridge and I'm a professional makeup artist. Over my career I must have made up thousands of faces from catwalk models to magazine covers and celebrities on the red carpet. Makeup can be seen as a frivolous subject, but I think it's hugely important. What we believe to be beautiful is a window on the world we're living in. As a makeup artist working in the fashion industry, my goal is always to create something which is modern, ideally to create future trends. But to do that, I'm constantly looking back in time. I've been collecting vintage makeup for the last 30 years and I'm fascinated by what it can tell us. I love the aesthetic of that, isn't, isn't it? Modern? it gorgeous? And the name, Oda Oh No, because who <laughs> wants to be stinky? In this series, I'm looking at some iconic eras in our history, each with radically different perceptions of beauty. Everyone wanted to be cafe au lait, like Josephine Baker. Yeah. And I want to find out what these looks say about the age. Here we have <gasps> Georgina's hair. <gasps> God, it's such a good color. I'll be researching original techniques and trying them on our model, Queenie. It's so easy to blend. They were onto something. <laughs> Scouring through recipe books, I'll make products that haven't seen the light of day for hundreds of years. It's just so incredibly natural. Almost looks like you're blushing from within. And for the more dangerous formulas, I'll be getting some professional help. Not too bad. Trust me. <laughs> OK. This was a fashionable shape. <laughs> This guy is just telling us he is hot. <laughs> Let the magic commence. Indeed. Voila! That looks great. It's my Blue Peter moment and I don't want to mess it up. Oh my gosh, how exciting! Oh! Yes. Well, I smell the cuttlefish. Strong women have always understood the power of makeup. Absolutely, especially a red lip. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> don't we still use makeup in those ways? There is a sort of strength in his face. That's amazing. Oh no, hairy legs. Gorgeous, shiny. Oh wow. wow. Smells like rotten eggs. Huge moustaches. Can I have a go, please? You can. They can't stop talking about it. Just touch up your makeup very brazenly. Oh, I feel very Clarabo. Makeup is an absolute no no. What someone puts on their face and why says as much about an era as art, architecture, or food. If you think beauty is only skin deep, think again.